<laughs> and I will jump off. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you, Ruth. You're welcome. <laughs> So that was a cameo appearance, right? Yes. Well, we were emailing back and forth and having a few jokes and laughs about it. So <laughs> she had emailed me and said, you know, hey, got somebody who can't be there tonight but wants to see the recording. So please don't forget. And I responded with basically a so you think emailing me now is going to make any difference tonight? <laughs> uh -huh. So then she said something about, well, she would she would pop on and hold up a record, you know, sign. <laughs> so when I saw the sign, I knew it was her. <laughs> Very good. Hey, Carl, how are you feeling? Good. <laughs> oh, that is Emily E. Yeah, that's my daughter. Okay. I'm going to rename myself. My father's name was Emil, so it's almost right. Well, the reason why I'm, I'm reacting this way is yesterday... I got an email after I set up a meeting with the staff here, and it says Emily E, you know, has signed into your your meeting. And it's like, who is that? <laughs> well, she was so, in the house one day and had a Zoom meeting, and I said, okay, you can, you know, just change your name. And... Well, we kind of thought it was a spy from St. Louis. Not that we're paranoid or anything like that. You just never know what we're going to talk about. As the late Bill Bartles once said. Just because you're not paranoid doesn't mean people aren't talking about it. <laughs> oh, my. Well, I have seven o'clock. Should we go ahead and get started? Why not? Sure. Welcome, everyone. We are glad that you have joined us this evening. We will be talking about uh, ministry to and with older adults. And our speaker is going to be Hans Springer of Aloha. And I'll let him tell you more about himself and about that in just a moment. Uh, but to get us started, uh, we're going to have President uh, Chris Wisher open us in prayer. So, yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you. Thanks for your interest in this, but also your interest in ministry to the older generation, which I officially am now part of as of July 25th. Uh, and you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you know, it's a growing ministry, and I think it's a very vital. It always has been, but I don't know. We live in a culture that is so youth-focused, and that youth is, is good. It's a blessing, but so is this age. Uh, I, I just am very much enjoying being a senior citizen. So, And I think the ministries and the congregations are just um, amazing, you know, possibility and potential. So I'm going to begin with prayer and um, go from there. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all ages of life that you have given to us, every season that comes from the, the wondrous storehouse of your love and mercy. As we look upon our congregations and the people and the work you've given to us, uh, may we not forget those who have gray heads, uh, those who are classified as senior citizens. Uh, and we pray at, that you would, you would inspire, inspire our congregations in such a way, such a way uh, that, uh, we, that would we would always cling to, to Jesus at every age that we are. Be with be Hans, with Hans tonight's, tonight's presenter. presenter. Uh, uh, open, open his mind, his mind and, and thoughts, thoughts uh, to, uh, to give us give great, us great ideas, ideas for this ministry. This ministry. In the name of the Christ, name of Christ we, pray. we pray. Amen. Amen. I was getting a lot of feedback. I still am. I want to mute everybody. Yes, I would take that right now so let me and 
while you're doing that, Lyle, I'm going to sign off because I'm going to go and see my son who is in the hospital um, in a very, very critical condition right now, uh, life and death. So Bev and I try to get up there as, as often as possible. So I hope you all excuse me. Keep him in your prayers. His name is Tim. Okay. Thank Good you night, for everybody. joining us. Right. And I'm going to hit mute all. And uh, Hans, that means you will have to unmute yourself again so that we'll be able to hear you in just a moment. And uh, Carl, as our uh, vice president of the district, can I call upon you at the end to lead us in a closing prayer? And again, remember uh, Tim particularly, but the, the entire Wisher family at that point. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I saw your head nodding, so I will take that as a, uh, an affirmative. And again, uh, welcome to all of you. Those of you who don't know me, I am Lyle Hagemeyer. I am the assistant to the president of the uh, Eastern District. So I work, Chris Wisher is my boss, and uh, I get to work with him and do whatever he tells me to do, which is find some great speakers for these Leos. We have taken the summer off. This is our first one to get going again here in the fall. Uh, we've had some outstanding speakers previously and tonight. I'm looking forward to what Hans has to say to us. So Hans, if you would, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and then go. And by the way, everyone, there will be, unless Hans has changed his mind, there will be a Q&A time at the end. So if you have some questions, write them down. And then we'll try to circle back and pick those up. If it's something that's really relevant to the moment, then please unmute yourself and uh, raise the question at that point. But otherwise, if you can hang on to the question, we'll make for a more conducive and smooth presentation. So Hans, if you would, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, you may hear a little bit of thunder in the background. We're right now have a little thunderstorm moving through. Uh, St. Louis uh, has a tendency and during this time of the year that we had very pleasant days but late in the day uh, those clouds begin to form we're almost like florida and you'll get a shower and some thunder so the only thing we have to worry about is that the power doesn't go out but we should be okay anyway uh, i'm hans sperner i'm the executive director of ALOA, the, uh, which stands for Adult Lutherans Organized for Action. It's a part-time position. Uh, the Eastern District is my home district. It's where I grew up. Uh, and I have lots of uh, memories and, uh, and friends still in the Eastern District. Uh, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a boy from uh, back home once upon a time. Uh, I have spent 50 years in, in the not-for-profit world. I spent 10 years in hospital administration and then 20 years in higher education and then 20 years in denominational church administration where I was a church bureaucrat. I have a BA in education. I have a Lutheran teacher's diploma. I'm on the roster. I'm in the book. I've never taught a day in my life because they didn't want to sick me on kids after I student taught. Now, I actually had an opportunity to work for uh, the college I was graduating from. I went back to school as an older student. Uh, and I also have a master's in nonprofit management. Uh, so it's a little bit about me. I got into this position in April of 2020. So a little bit over a year ago, year and a half. And when I originally took this position, I was on the board and our previous executive director kind of uh, suddenly resigned. And we spent six months trying to figure out what to do when uh, I finally said, I could do this. And they interviewed me officially and offered me the position. And so here I am. When I got into this position, I had many opportunities to meet and greet people, all of which went by the wayside because of the great pandemic. Uh, there was probably at least 12 to 14 different places I was supposed to be and to speak, uh, none of which happened. 
subsequently we, we have done some presentation through Zoom like this. Uh, so COVID-19 was, uh, has been uh, kind of a detriment to trying to get people meet with them face to face. So we learned Zoom and we uh, learned to do webinars. And I've spent probably the last year and a half uh, basically uh, gaining information about not only the organization, but older adults and older adult ministry. I've done a lot of reading and talked to people uh, through email and the telephone uh, to kind of uh, figure out, well, what is this all about? By the way, President Wisher said that he just joined the ranks. Uh, I'm not sure how that true that is. That means he must have just turned 50, right? Because uh, Aloha considers anyone by the age of 50 and above to be in that generation. Um, one of uh, our challenges in our organization is 30 years old is to grow our membership base or our support base through individuals and congregations. We are Pan Lutheran. We're supported by both church bodies, major church bodies. Uh, unfortunately, neither church body, and this is somewhat tragic, has anyone at the upper level in its administration that has responsibilities for older adult ministry, which is kind of telling. You would think that they would, uh, but they don't. Most of the activity goes on in local areas, in districts and local synods, um, and basically uh, um, among congregations, there are pockets here and there. Um, specifically what Aloha tries to do is to support congregations for older adult ministries by providing resources, providing hands-on support uh, through congregational consultations which because of the pandemic, we have not done uh, a lot of those in, in recent uh, times. Um, we did receive about a uh, year and a half ago, two years now, a grant from the ELCA Lutheran Services for the Elderly Endowments, a three-year grant to develop uh, congregational centers for vital and resilient aging programs. Uh, in the first year, we were to develop an older adult ministry toolkit, and that's what we have spent the last year and a half on. We're a little bit behind, again, mainly because of the pandemic. We've just uh, gone through the first draft of the toolkit. In year two, uh, we're, we're, we're supposed to uh, concentrate on congregational concept. It sounded, I had talked to Terry about if I could put it on the screen and I didn't, I just have a kind of uh, Someone, would you please mute yourself? Okay, Thank you. there we go. Um, anyway, uh, and then the third year is to work on cohort group development. Uh, Congregational toolkit uh, is made up of four different areas, uh, spiritual aspects of older adult ministry, educational aspects, social community aspects, and then intergenerational. Our goal is to have this be a digital document. It's about 100 pages right now and be available on our website and that it would have a staggered layout and that you could get into uh, particular areas that you might be interested in. Um, uh, there will be printed versions, but limited, mainly as reference copies. Uh, our goal is to have this be a growing and always changing uh, resource document. Um, the, the spiritual aspect, uh, we are kind of dealing with older adult faith 
and spirituality grounded in a faith and life narrative uh, enlivened by sacred space and experience embodied through vital faith practices and sustained by hope. Congregations can become vital centers of aging, aging by developing such older adult faith, spirituality, and wholeness. Uh, the education part, which is probably the biggest right now, uh, has lots of different resources, age-related topics. Uh, we talk about different partners uh, and are generating uh, hope to show uh, ideas for programming that are out there that have been used by other people. Uh, what we have in there is not necessarily always from Lutheran sources. If we have seen uh, something in other church body that looks relevant, we've included it and included the references to it. Uh, the social aspects, uh, again, we'll have ideas for programming, some intentional ideas for bringing people together and some intentionality about combating loneliness. Uh, the intergenerational section of this toolkit uh, will have a bunch of activities. This section is getting fairly large. Uh, we talk a little bit about faith stories, which is uh, something that Alola has done uh, for a number of years. We have a number of these out on our website. Uh, they're interesting to really look at where we have videotaped high schoolers talking to older adults and kind of listening to their story. And then we've got quite a bit of material out there now on grandparenting uh, and also on doing some events. Uh, we're always looking for more help in what ought to be in there. And it's hard to talk about, uh, you know, what's there because it's changing all the time and because it's still under development. Uh, it was developed by our board. We have about 12, 14 people on the board. We divided them up in the four groups and each of the groups worked on one of these aspects. So one of the challenges for me was when I was compiling this stuff was to try to figure out how to bring some unity to it and we've got a ways to go with that we're going to use a professional editor to help us uh, get that into better shape uh, uh, we, we will be developing some other uh, print and video resources also and web-based materials with this but if uh, and this is hard for me to ask you to do because you really haven't seen what's in it yet. Uh, but if you have an idea or know of a resource that, uh, uh, or a group that is doing older adult ministries, uh, we'd rather include it rather than not include them. Uh, for example, in one of the sections, we refer to the Kansas district of the LCMS, which has a district-wide task force on older adult uh, ministries. Uh, I think there are about six or seven people on that task force. I, I've met with them a couple of times through Zoom uh, and uh, they have actually done a survey in that district and uh, we refer what they've done is there, some of the results. Uh, so it's there. Uh, um, one of the things that I've learned over this last year and a half is that the number one result for older adults these days seems to be, and understandably, loneliness. Older people tend to be lonely uh, at times. Uh, and the long-term effect with that, uh, and that's where the COVID-19 pandemic has really affected uh, I think older people, and, and that's in learning to cope and manage life, but in a changed way. And yet seniors are very resilient and adaptable. And yeah, a great number of them have learned all about Zoom and have learned how to use YouTube. So it's, uh, 
uh, I'm just looking at some of my other notes here that I really probably don't need to go, go through, but uh, uh, we have also been working with uh, Concordia University in Chicago. They are trying to put together a certification program um, where uh, it, it's called the SAM Specialist in Adult Ministries. And it's a certification program. They're still kind of dickering around how they're going to do this uh, and, and, and deliver it. Uh, originally, they were looking to get people to go up to the campus and to take a, a week long course. And we've convinced them it's probably better to do this uh, electronically and try doing it over two days uh, and uh, charge a very modest price for it. So uh, we've been working on them uh, with them uh, about that a little bit. They're looking to us to help provide places where uh, they could uh, promote this program and, and get it going. Uh, the uh, Aloha, we, uh, we do a, a monthly webinar, usually, except for the summertime. Uh, and they are archived. You can go to our website and dig them out. There's a lot of material on our website not as much as there used to be because we had too much. We've cleaned it up a little bit. But uh, uh, early in the pandemic, uh, we did a, a webinar by one, with one of our board members who did interviews uh, with some older folks uh, living in assisted uh, uh, living facilities. And I, I remember one lady, because we ask, well, what is it that you really miss the most and not being able to get out? And the lady said, well, I can't get my hair done anymore. So that was important to her. Anyway, uh, like I said, Aloha has been around for 30 years. It started uh, through an initial grant from Wheat Ridge, got us going. Uh, one of the, well, the first, uh, executive director was Carl Lutze in the first 10 years uh, when he retired from teaching at Valparaiso and some of his other things. So some of the early materials put out were put out by him. Um, his, uh, his wife is still a, a good supporter. Uh, we hear from her every now and then. So she's still around. And uh, there are lots of other places where there is some older adult ministry going on. New Jersey District, uh, Shirley Carpenter, who is a former board member chair, uh, is very active with about a dozen people in her district and is always putting stuff out on the district website about older adult ministry and the potentials. So here's a question I have for you all. What is the what is the Eastern District? Does the Eastern District have a ministry to older adults? If okay. you're asking on a district level, no, uh, there is not. District level, or if you know of congregations within the district that are active. But first on the district-wide basis, is there, well, I ask this of every district I go to, so. No, there is not a district-wide. Uh, okay. Well, what I, what I have found, if you go to most congregations and they say, what are you doing for older adult ministries? They say, oh, not much. And then I start asking questions. Well, who does this and who does that? And... Pretty soon they say, oh, we have a lot of older adults involved in various aspects of the ministry of our congregation. We just never thought of looking at it that way. I tell both of our pastors, we have two of them, young guys. Uh, 
uh, their job is to bring younger families in and they're doing a good job of that. I've told, but we've also had a number of funerals lately. So I told them for every funeral we have, they have to have a baptism, bring somebody in, got to regenerate the troops. But I tell them, be nice to the little old ladies. Uh, they uh, inherit all of the money and have it all. So, um, okay. Hans, as you uh, speak, excuse me, as you speak about uh, loneliness as one of the primary needs, what can congregations do to assist those who are lonely in, in their congregation or in their community? Well, particularly during the pandemic, there's lots of different things that I think uh, people can do to keep in touch. Uh, now that at least here in Missouri, we're able to get out a little bit more uh, so we can actually get in there and make home visits and to do that. But, you know, in my own congregation, when I look around and if you would ask me before I took this job, what adult ministries are we doing? And I'd say, oh, I don't think we're doing any. But then I discovered we have several small groups that get together that are of the older adult vintage. Uh, a lot of those folks volunteer to do things in our church that would never get done if, if they hadn't uh, uh, been able to help us. I mean, it could be as simple as coming in and putting the bulletins together. Uh, the uh, hello yes i'm my name is trisha stang and i'm from grace lutheran church in vestal um when you put the senior citizen group 50 and above i would say 97 percent of our whole congregation is in that category um for our congregation an outside ministry we have a little respite program that we started called grace's place which is on the second Saturday from one to four. It's been paused since the COVID, but it started out in, uh, in January of 19. Um, anyway, that's what we're doing for the four hours. It's sort of like a, instead of a nursery school, it's a drop off for older people with maybe have a little dementia problem, need some socialization. Um, that would be our quote unquote ministry. But basically, our whole congregation is older. Um, and we have we do have something called social graces that we get together for various things, go out for Chinese New Year's, and we've gone to special exhibits at Roberson at the Art Museum and a little bit of socialization in that respect. We have the coffee hour afterwards. We have people that give rides to other people to, uh, to church. Um, but our whole congregation is aging. Well, you're, uh, there are lots of other churches in the same boat. What is this group called again? Grace what? Our, our respite program is called Grace's Place. And it's the second Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. And it's like a drop-off for older people. Okay. And we, we have, we do a little craft, we do a little socialization, pastor or the coordinator does, um, well, like at, at Easter time or Valentine's Day, something relevant to um, the holiday and the month, what's going on in the month, whether it's harvest in the fall or flowers in the spring. We play bingo, they love bingo, I love to call bingo. Um, uh, do chair yoga sometimes or just chair, you know, passive mostage kind of things. Um, and, the, and the hours kind of go by. So it's, it's a ministry to the older people for socialization, but it's also for the uh, sandwich generation to drop their, their loved one off and to have a few hours of free time for themselves. Good. We're going to put you in the toolkit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's those kinds of examples that uh, we learn, uh, you know, how other people do things that are kind of important. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Even in my own congregation, though, we have 
now have crying babies, which are encouraged to be there and not necessarily in back of the church. If you look around, uh, there are a lot of white haired, gray haired people or people with hair falling out. So uh, yeah, my own congregation had a group that went out for dinner one or lunch once a month. Uh, and that kind of went by the way uh, with, uh, with COVID. But uh, I think that we're at the point where uh, that can come back. I think one of the things that uh, a lot of congregations learned uh, with the pandemic was to really get involved into technology so that they were able to stream um, their services. And uh, obviously that reaches older people on a much uh, more frequent basis uh, that can't, even before the pandemic, could not come to church for whatever reason. So uh, we do we, do that too. Uh, right. We're not streaming, but it's it's presented on YouTube and such. But one of the kind of neat things that I think we did is we have this one call now where one call goes out to the whole congregation, whether it's a weather cancellation or something. Anyway, one of the parishioners would get on Tuesday and Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, he would put forth this little positive message. It was more like maybe two minutes long, but it was really kind of neat, especially when we were really closed down. Uh, and just to have that phone call was sort of uplifting, a uh, little message that made you feel like you belonged. Anyway, I thought that was a neat thing to do and it's still going on. Right. Um, yeah, it, uh, one of the things that we did for a while, we stopped doing it, uh, but on Wednesdays, uh, because we weren't for a while not being able to get into church, we would do a Wednesday evening, quote, hymn saying, where it was the two pastors and a couple other members and the organist playing hymns. And there'd be an introduction a little bit about the history of the hymn writer and the hymn. Uh, it lasted about 40 minutes and it was really quite popular uh, while it was going on. Uh, right now we're able to get back into church and have been since Pentecost of last year. We weren't really shut down uh, too long, but uh, we're able to uh, to get back in. Uh, St. Louis County now mandates that we have to wear a mask. We were to the point where we were even not wearing masks uh, because before this those most recent uh, variant came along. Uh, but uh, and our attendance has uh, stayed up, and people are beginning to come back. I think the other great tool uh, in this is just the uh, whole idea of evangelism. We have people watch our services from all over the country. Uh, you know, people kind of skip around and see stuff and then they, they get on board. Uh, and that's just not older people, but uh, uh, I always joke, it's nice to watch church from home uh, because, you know, I can sit there and drink my coffee I've been a great advocate for having cup holders put in the pews, but that hasn't caught on yet, even though I'm president of the congregation. So uh, what, what are what are some of the other others of you doing? I saw somebody here say something uh, before and they had typed something in and I missed it. No, I'm typing on my phone. It's Lori Bell. We also have a, a caregiver's ministry for caregivers of people living with dementia but it's it's actually you know like what um patricia was saying it's a, it's broader than um just the people living with dementia and the caregivers the members of the congregation who tend to be also older as well as young um get a, a greater sense of active ministry and so you can utilize people from all ages in it so it's it and it's ours is um in conjunction with the alzheimer's association um, but it was started through a grant from the LWML. Okay. So, yeah. Carl, I see you had your hand raised. Um, a couple of things. I, I've been uh, semi-retired for about eight years now, but 
uh, as I recall, and as I still observe when I uh, help here and there around the district filling in when pastors are on vacation, uh, I think the majority of our congregations are 50 plus, if you want to go with that uh, metric to say, you know, senior citizen. But uh, the senior citizens that I know and interact with, and I'm one of them, uh, are all healthy and active and, and loaded with talent. Uh, there's extreme wealth of talent and, and people are living longer and, and healthier. Uh, what an opportunity to uh, equip people for ministry with their various uh, gifts and interests. Um, going back about eight years when I was still in the parish, I had a um, ministry to the um, bringing Holy Communion to uh, the homebound. And I developed a, a core of, of lay people. Uh, I would take them with me uh, on a visit just to show them how, how it can go. Actually wrote out a, a script if they wanted to use it, uh, rely on something word for word. And we would bring uh, consecrated communion elements from the previous Sunday's worship service. That way we get around the issue of um, lay people consecrating the elements, even, even though when they did their visits, I had them repeat the words of institution in the hearing of, of the shut-ins. And uh, it was great because a lot of the people who were doing the visits, they only had maybe one or two members that they would visit. They would spend much more time visiting with them than I ever could. And uh, the joke was that they filled the communion glass a little uh, fuller than I would also. But um, <laughs> It was kind of a win-win situation because uh, the people who did the visits really enjoyed it and uh, the homebound folks whom they were visiting also enjoyed it because the visits went longer and one or two of my visitors were nurses who kind of looked in on them. Uh, How are you doing physically? You know, are you uh, taking your medications? Do you need a ride to your doctor's appointment? Things like that. So uh, that worked out well. Um, and you raise uh, uh, and, uh, something that I've heard in other uh, congregations doing, and that is to really have people that are available to do this uh, for older adults, uh, you know, particularly to make sure that their their medical needs are taken care of and if they need a ride to the doctor and, and things like that. Uh, I mean, I can't believe when I retired, number one, I found out I had diabetes. Next thing I knew, I had prostate cancer and found out that I have a heart murmur. You know, I'm now taking a ton of medication. I mean, I'm in remission. I'm doing fine. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you kind of, uh, you know, you got to remember to take the pills when you're supposed to. You know, I'm afraid someday I'm going to forget and then I'll have to quit this job because then I'll really uh, be out of my mind, as they say. But uh um, there, there are, um, we've got a pastor out in, uh, an ELCA pastor out in Oregon. He's at the tip of the Columbia River. He's got to be in, in it's got to be nowhere's land. It's a small community. He is working on a manual and, and working on uh, what, uh, a concept he calls wisdom circles, where he tries to get older adults together in uh, his congregation and maybe some neighboring congregations just to talk to each other. Um, some of the things that uh, have been done by others, we did it uh, here locally for a while, but is to get older adults and younger children together into dialogue. One of our local schools, one of the teachers decided, uh, and she was a fourth grade teacher, that it would be great to have the fourth graders uh, get to meet some of the residents of our Lutheran, one of our Lutheran um, senior citizens uh, places, uh, got them together once a month, and they just kind of dialogue. And uh, I, I know one of the couples that participated in it, they just loved it. Uh, they thought that this was really great to be able to do. We have some resources in there 
uh, that uh, have some resources about grandparenting, which I think is a topic that sometimes is forgotten uh, among uh, seniors that the job we have of uh, grandparenting and um, uh, Peter Meyer in the Florida Georgia district did a, a webinar in, in their district and I happened to see it. I liked it so much I had, it, had him do it for Aloha, but he's got a whole collection of organizations and resources out there that are geared in teaching, you know, how to be better grandparents and some of the issues that get involved with grandparenting, particularly if there's been a divorce and the kids are uh, some valuable tools that, uh, that we're trying to put in uh, for that. But uh, Hans, is that video one of the ones available from your website? Yes, it's uh, it's out there. If you look at the archives, uh, he did this just, uh, I don't know if he's he was the last one before our summer break or the one before, but it's one of the more recent ones. One of the, the other things we don't have in the, the toolkit yet, but we want to put in there, and we've got lots of materials. We've probably got too many materials, but to do a whole section on end of life uh, and how to deal with that, uh, you know, from as simple as teaching people that uh, it's uh, wise to have a uh, medical directive uh, and some other things. And so some of it goes into uh, uh, estate planning, not from the point of view of uh, trying to get somebody involved into doing something, but just as you get older, learning to take care of your finances correctly and having things in, in place. Uh, one of our board members uh, did a series of, and this is on the website too, uh, of, uh, they, they were special different webinars, but she did a series of three and there's some great materials that she's developed and we wanna include that. Uh, in there. I think the challenge for Aloha is to find folks that uh, are willing to, uh, well, number one, support us financially, but also uh, begin to be ambassadors in their congregation for older adult ministry and to make that more of an active kind of thing uh, in uh, in both church bodies. Um, so. You've mentioned the toolkit. Is that something available to others? It's, we're getting there. Here, here it is. This is draft one. Uh, I'm in the process of getting it, hiring an editor to go through it and to straighten out some of it. Uh, it took me two whole weeks to take all of the materials that our board members had sent to me and we found in other places to put this into some semblance of order. So uh, I expect within the next six months, uh, we'll have it out on our website. I think if we feel comfortable enough that it's in a good enough shape, uh, that it's not too disjointed, uh, we'll have it out there sooner rather than later and then add stuff to it uh, as we, we get it. Uh, we're hoping that by putting it out there electronically, and there is a table of contents that people will go to that and kind of look and see if there's a topic they're interested in, and then go to that section. Uh, we're not expecting people to take this thing and memorize the whole thing or to take it all in. Uh, I think ultimately it's going to be uh, such a rich tool and be able to be used to uh, by people, and this is not our first attempt at this. This is probably our third attempt at this. I have two earlier versions that we've had out there, and there's some materials in these earlier versions I wanna steal you too, to put in. But Aloha basically is a, a board of uh, 12, 14 uh, different people, half from the LCMS, 
F from the ELCA and one non-Lutheran stuck in there in the middle. Uh, and it is an executive director. I am part-time. Uh, and I have to remind the board I'm part-time because uh, they want me to do everything. And then we have an operations manager. Uh, her name is Carol Murphy. Uh, she lives and operates out of Florida on, in Clearwater. Uh, we have an office at, at a church there that we basically use for storage and as an address on our legal papers. We're actually incorporated in the state of Illinois. Uh, Rich Bemler is on our board. Um, Mary Mann Simon is on our board. She loves to send me emails. She always has questions. Uh, she's great. Uh, we have a retired dean from Luther College. I'm going up to see him, uh, Raleigh Martinson, who's written a book, book, a book called Elders Rising, which is uh, fascinating to read. He did interviews of I don't know how many different people, and then he recounts uh, that in his book. Um, let's see, we have a former executive from the ELCA who was employee number two when the ELCA started. And on their recent cutbacks, they threw him out the door, which is a shame. I mean, just a uh, really good guy. Uh, and uh, some, uh, some other people around, uh, one of our board members is uh, coming off, so we gotta find a new one. Um, I don't know how many of you know, David Mack uh, uh, in, out of Baltimore. His dad was the president of the Southeastern District a few years ago, Roy Mack. Uh, David is a good Bronxville grad, so I always have to lift him up. But uh, so I, I an active board that uh, is not afraid to get their hands dirty and to do stuff and and to work on on things so uh, I enjoy working with them I've been on other boards where sometimes the board is not too active the staff kind of runs everything and that's not the case with Aloha uh, Ons for a, a congregation that's uh, wanting to get started more intentionally with older adult ministry what would you suggest they do first Pray, and then kind of take a look around um, to see what they're already doing that kind of fits in that. Uh, the other thing that we have to be cognizant of that every day, 10,000 people reach 65 and retire. And, you know, it's kind of been hovering around that it may increase um, people over 50, in spite of what we say about young people, are still the larger uh, component of the population. Uh, so don't count old people out. But I, I think to take a look and kind of identify some things uh, that you may already be doing, uh, probably have a chat with the pastor and to say, how do you feel about old people? What are we doing as a congregation to maybe review and uh, to look at stuff? So you can always call us. We'd be happy to come and visit with a congregation and kind of do an assessment and maybe give you some pointers as to uh, where you might begin. Every congregation is unique and different. And that's what I've kind of found surprising as I, as I read and I hear, and as I travel around, I hear a lot of adult, older adult ministry going on in the church, both churches, that I think the church at large is not aware of. It's sort of hidden gems out there. I, I think if you've got neighboring congregations that are involved in one way or the other, um, get together and kind of uh, learn from each other uh, more, more than anything. 
Okay. Are there others who would like to raise a question to Hans? Somebody asked me to spell out the website address. Here it is. Aloha Sirs, one word, dot org. Real easy to remember. And it is uh, in the chat for anyone who hasn't seen it. So if you look in the chat, you'll see how it's spelled. Make sure you spell it correctly. It's not Aloha like in uh, Aloha Hawaiian. You know, I went to the uh, LW, the LLL convention, the LWML convention in Kentucky in June, and I had my Aloha shirt on, which are blue and, you know, the logo on there. And people kept on coming up to me and say, so what part of Hawaii are you from? And I'm thinking of having Hawaiian shirts made with our logo on it. Uh, and actually, it's a good uh, conversation starter because you can really you know, start talking to people about what it, what it is that, uh, that we do. If a congregation would like to have you or someone from Aloha come in, uh, what is the commitment on the congregation's part? Uh, it would help if you could cover travel expenses depending on the location. And I'm not saying completely. Uh, or even better, have the congregation really uh, uh, be uh, upfront and become a partner of Aloha. You know, put us in the budget. Doesn't have to be huge, $500, $1,000. Uh, we don't have a lot of congregational partners. We need to have more. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, Sometimes we can tie these things in together with some other things. So uh, we're not out looking to make a, a nickel off of anybody. Um, we do want to help congregations. And you know, the old saying, uh, free advice sometimes isn't listened to as much as if you paid a little bit for it. And would it be possible for congregations to get together? So if a congregation says we can't really afford it by ourselves, uh, could they do a joint meeting with a Sure, Lord? get two or three together. Um, I mean, we're fairly open to all kinds of different ways of looking at it. I think what, what our interest is, is to really get out more among the churches uh, Hopefully now that uh, we're able to travel, we were trying to have our face-to-face -face board meeting last month in Florida and the press kind of blew so much of this stuff, what's going on in Florida, I think out of proportion, but we also have board members from across um, the country. Our board chair, uh, Carolyn Ross, uh, she lives in California, so Obviously, she had a long ways to go, uh, and we have people from other parts of, of, the, of the country, so we decided to have it by Zoom again. Uh, it's interesting. I have not yet met Carol Murphy, my operations manager, in person. Uh, she and I Zoom every Monday, and, you know, we spend 45 minutes just going over stuff that's going on, uh, and I uh, twice a month I do the same with the president and you know, I've not met her face to face either. Some of the board members, because I've known them in, in a, my other lives, I've met, but uh, it, it's, I think one of the constraints of having to meet through, through Zoom, which is fine, but I sure would love to have you all in one room and be able to shake your hand and to see you face to face. It is, it is much better. And that Jeff Nickel, he just has his picture out there. He doesn't want to put himself out there live. No, I'm 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 uh, dressed here at home with my dogs and stuff. So if you don't mind, I won't put my picture up. <laughs> well, I know what you look like. So Jeff was a vicar uh, at our congregation many moons ago. Uh, in fact, I, I say he was the first vicar in the modern era that we had 
we had had Vickers in the past, but then I had, did not have them for quite a while. And uh, Jeff was the first one. And we've not had a bad one. Uh, now we stop because we got an associate pastor. So can't afford to do both. Hey, Hans, did you say the modern era or the modern error? Uh, no, era, <laughs> E-R-A. Oh, oh, okay. I thought maybe I was the the modern era. No, 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 no. no you guys uh, are great. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, uh, you can always send me an email. Uh, I'm uh, I'm Hans, my first name, at aloasars.org. That email will get to me. Uh, if you want to talk to me personally, call the 800 number. Uh, you'll find that I have an extension on that 800 number. When you push it, it comes to my cell phone, and I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, the, uh, so it is possible to run an organization without too much of uh, uh, you know, personnel or whatnot. We're very mean and lean. Uh, even compared to the past where we had uh, our paid people on the staff. But uh, right now, uh, you know, this is the other uh, unfortunate thing with older people is uh, they continue to give until the Lord calls them home. Then what? So we're facing uh, very much so an older uh, uh, donor base uh, compared to maybe some other organizations and it's small, but faithful. So in fact, I just wrote the, uh, the fall appeal letter, which is uh, be happy and give. Uh, and I refer to, I refer in the letter to uh, an article I just read in the Wall Street Journal about three weeks ago that talked about some research that had been done, actual scientific research with measurements and everything where they actually have been able to determine older people are happier and older people are more generous. So think about that when you're looking out at your gray-haired people. Hans, as we're uh, running toward the end of our hour here, just does uh, Aloha have a newsletter or is it just- Yes, we do. Us? Yes, we do. And how do people uh, sign up for that? Uh, you can do it on our website. Send us uh, an email at uh, Aloha Sirs, and we'll put you. Be happy to put you on. Uh, we also put out uh, a uh, podcast every so often. It's not on a regular schedule. Mary Man Simon writes these, and she does a great job. But uh, and if she sees an idea, she'll get something out uh, out there and. Uh, uh, but yeah, our most recent newsletter just came out in the mail, comes out about every other month, I think, give or take. Uh, but uh, uh, there, this month uh, has a couple of articles. One was written by uh, uh, Pastor Steinke, who was one of the founders uh, from way back, and he talks about the days of when... Uh, Wheat Ridge gave the first funding to get us started. Uh, and uh, and then there's an article by Ken Holthorff, one of our board members who's been around forever too. But, uh, and, then, and then I write a column. Uh, I wrote one on burnout, I think, is what it was called. At 30, we're not burnt out yet. We had a long ways to go. But yes, um, newsletter. You can subscribe. Very good. We thank you again for your time. And Carl, if I can call upon you to close us in prayer and pray for a blessing upon Hans as well as Aloha. And again, on uh, Chris, President Wisher, and Tim and family. Unmute yourself. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for the gift of life. 
and especially for the gift of new, abundant, and eternal life that is ours through Jesus Christ. We thank you that uh, even though the generations rise and fall before your face, you are always there with us, with your love, your forgiveness, your peace, and your promise. We thank you for Hans and for Aloha and for all of the ministries that are already taking place in many congregations, as well as the opportunity to share resources and uh, to begin new things, uh, tapping on the resources that already exist and, and putting them into action in ministry to one another, to your glory always. We thank you that you're with us from cradle to grave and beyond and bless our efforts at expanding and improving our, our ministry to all ages, including those in the older brackets. Help us to keep on discovering and developing and, and sharing these good ideas. Watch over Tim and Chris and Bev and their family in these difficult times. Keep them safe and may, be it, may it be your, your good and gracious will to bring about healing for Tim. And this we ask in the name of our great physician, our Lord, our savior, and our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, thank you so much. You're welcome and thank you and a good evening to all of you. I uh, hope to see some of you, if not all of you next month, as we will uh, be talking about church budgets and setting a new budget for uh, next year. Blessings everyone.